Hey, hey, party people. Live at five. It's Friday night. It's Friday night. Um, question. How many of you played in the greatest game in L.A. sports history? Hmm. One. He's coming on tonight. Tim freaking Leary, 88. Dodger champions coming on. How many of you collaborated with Kobe Bryant on a project? Maybe a book or something like that. Wesley King did, and he's coming on tonight. Where's my family at? Ratings go up when the family's here. I need my St. Mark people. Class of 78, you know, and then came back and in 2000 coached the basketball team, girls basketball, to a CYO title. That's right. I'm not ashamed of that. That's a good time right there. VBC. Where are my VBC people at? You seen that show on Tuesday nights? Wow. Who thought of that? Hey, where are my AAU people? Guess what's coming up on Wednesday? The Sullivan Awards. The AAU Sullivan Awards. Oh, my goodness. Top five states before we get the show started, right? Outside of California, of course. Missouri, still holding strong. Oklahoma, okay with me. Oregon cracks the top five outside of Cali this week. Florida and OH. I O. Start the show. Coming to you live from Los Angeles, it's the top-rated show in the Sentinella Adobe Corridor. Operating in the shadow of LAX, out of the 7428 studio, where Jimbo is at the controls and Buck takes a nap until he's got to take a crap. It's Facebook Live at 5. Hi, hi everybody. Christine here. I'm here to tell you where to find us on social media. So if you can remember these three phrases... You can find us anywhere. The first, Sports Stories Podcast. The second, Sports Stories with Denny Lennon. That's Denny like the restaurant, Lennon like the beetle. Or Sports Stories DL. We're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and of course here on Facebook. Like us, subscribe. If you had a podcast, we'd like you and we'd subscribe to you. I'm a Venice, California-born, Los Angeles-based sports fan. One that has played, coached, announced, and promoted sports my whole life. My love affair with sports started in my own backyard and has led me to this podcast. Thanks to the support of the Amateur Athletic Union in East Bay, I'm excited to bring you Sports Stories with Denny Lennon. Hey, hey, people. Now, it's been quite a week, uh, so before we get going... Let's, let's remember what we did. Dwyer Brown was in on Monday. Remember, Mondays is our long form. We talk to either uh, authors or documentarians, something of the sort. And Dwyer Brown from um, A Field of Dreams, who wrote a great book, If You Build It. Coming up this, this week. week. That was good. Um, so Dwyer was in. Tuesday was um, VBC show. All right. So that VBC show, as you know, gets going, and, and then you don't know where it's going to go. I know where it's going to go next week. It's going to take a week off. And then after that, we'll be back for more of the VBC. Wednesday, we had in the Madison 212 a preview of what's going to be a terrific series, we think, in August, a video podcast series. And we had the, uh, the people in, uh, the people's in, including Coach Tim Willis. He goes by Turbo in some circles. He was in. So was the rest of the uh, crew. And we had a really good talk and kind of kick-started that whole idea that will be coming back to you around. Thursday, we dropped our uh, video podcast, as we always do, video and audio podcast, and that was Jimmy Lennon Jr., part two. So uh, hopefully you're catching up with that one. Yep, you can find us on YouTube. Remember, just you can start at the uh, website. You can find everything from there. Hey, we got a big uh, show coming up today, tonight, most of you tonight. How about we shoot on over to Venice Beach and visit with one of the producers of Sports Stories with Denny Lennon, Marley Rice. The 10 and under national champion of beach volleyball in the year 2000 for the Amateur Athletic Union, Marley Rice. Thank you, thank you everyone, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, welcome, I pretty much just got home. That's good, we're running around delivering the Carlos's goods. I was, and they are good today. That sounds worse, we're talking Mexican food and tequila. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Okay. I was talking about this right here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
Well, coming up tonight on Facebook Live at 5, we have Wesley King, who is the New York Times best-selling author and writer behind the Kobe Bryant series, the Wizenard series. I'd highly suggest going to um, read that book. Um, I have it on audio, so I'm kind of trying to listen to it as I do all my stuff for the Sports Stories podcast. It's a pretty cool um, book. Uh, next, we have Tom Leary. He's in the building, uh, virtually, that is. Uh, he was the pitcher on the 1988 World uh, Series championship team the, for the Dodgers. Uh, hence, my Dodgers had my Kobe hat shirt so i'm all set for this facebook live at five and i hope you guys stick around for the end because we always have some fun and exciting times with box cobbler entertainment and it should be a good show so i'm looking forward to it and i can't wait to cheers with carlos haro um casablanca i went to deliver all the food today so where are you guys at let's just cheers to carlos right now um, I was. I want to make sure Tom Leary is going to make. It. Did I say Tom? No. <laughs> well, we know Tim's here, but we got to call. We got to call into Tom. So hopefully he'll make it. Oh, hey, yeah. where, where's Carlos at? He's going. Let's get over to Casablanca. Yo, Carlos. Hey, how you doing, Danny? How you guys doing over there? Oh, I think I know where you are. You're, you're in front of your uh, your tequila bar that has fourteen thousand different types of tequila, right? about 5,000. No, we have a lot of tequilas. Over about uh, about 2,000 tequilas. Wow. Okay. That's uh, that's impressive. That's one of your better backdrops. Oh, thanks. You've been uh, keeping up with the show this week? I have. I've, I got really excited about the uh, the Madison show. I've been talking about the, uh, the 212 to my kids, about putting that extra, extra degree. So I, that always resonates, that motivation. And then I got a uh, I've been watching uh, the boxing with Jimmy Lennon, so I've been keeping up, and definitely the chaos that is uh, the BBC on Tuesday, which is yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen, it, you watch it. And and did uh, did I did you, did you get um uh, did you hear about the AAU Sullivan Awards are going to be on Wednesday this week? Or I am I am so excited about the Sullivan Awards, and I knew that partnering up with you would lead us to something big, and I'm excited that I'm going to be one of the big sponsors. Oh. At the so I, got, I, got some, I got some bad news to break to you. Unless uh, you can deliver margaritas and food to all 10 of our finalists that are spread out across the country, you're going to have to take the, the, that out. I would say probably so, not margaritas because I don't know if all of them are 21, are they? Right. Good point. So, <laughs> Carlos, you might have to take Ooh. that one off. I might have to take it out on that one. I'm, I might have to be a Sullivan finalist then. <laughs> hey, Carlos, cheers, yeah. buddy. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. Thank you very much. Happy hour. Right, yeah, happy hour. All right. We just sent um, Marley out to look for Tom Leary. <laughs> um, God, you know? Hey, I, I was wondering something. Your yes. gear. Who, who, who do you get your gear from? Uh, right now I got my uh, – I'm, I'm representing Santa Barbara, UC Santa okay. Barbara. And then nice. I got my uh, Casablanca shirt. This is a, uh, a custom design uh, from my wife. So. All right. I'm all, only wearing custom stuff right now, which is which is nice. I, I just want you to know we're 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 getting closer with East Bay to being able to deliver uh, th those kind of gear to anybody that's associated with the show. So so you just keep an eye on it because I got the best prices and you get a discount from uh, SSDL. And speaking yeah. of discounts, what do you got going for takeout? All right, perfect. This we uh, for tomorrow. If you guys call us up, I got the margarita tortillas and green salsa. And if you say you're calling from Sports Thirty with Danny Lennon, usually it's twenty dollars for you guys would be seventeen dollars. So make sure you ask, and when you call, make sure you say they're calling from Sports Thirties with Danny Lennon. Nice. All right, and and I hear sales have jumped close to five hundred percent since you started the sponsorship. That is that is I I couldn't make it in this type of times without your without your your viewership and your guests. But your yeah. no, no, your your community has been so great. <laughs> oh, go on. All right, buddy. Well, um, would you like to say hi to Adam? I would. I would okay. definitely. Can we can we make that oh, happen? I we uh, <laughs> a ah, that's a good. I that that's a good, good swipe. I like it. All right. Hey, um, as mentioned, the um, the Sullivan. Oh, did you notice that trophy over there? Mm -hmm. That's a replica of the actual Sullivan Award. I might show it to you later. But uh, the, the presenting sponsor is East Bay, and we also deal with them on our podcast uh, as one of our sponsors that helps out our heroes movement. So I think it would be great after we uh, go to commercial with Casa Blanca. High level. High level production people. Casa Commercial. 
Vámonos a Casa Blanca, vámonos a Casa Blanca, la comida para la familia. Vámonos a Casa Blanca, vámonos a Casa Blanca. Stretch time, we got to find Adam again. He'll be coming back. But what I did want to uh, show you is, let's see if I could do it this way. Look at that. That's going to be the podium for Wednesday. We will clean up the place. Don't worry. That's going to be the podium uh, for Wednesday for the AAU James E. Sullivan Awards, which uh, is going to be hosted right here on um, Facebook.com, Sports Stories Podcast. And right there, that is a, a replica trophy, um, the award that's been given out since 1930. And so as long as I'm stretching, why don't I make a plug? Look, the very first winner in 1930, and by the way, that precedes the Heisman Award. So I can argue it's the nation's best uh, award for amateurs or anybody else, uh, was Bobby Jones. Since that time, guys like Bob Mathias, Rayford Johnson, William Rudolph, Mark Spitz, Bill Walton. Must I go on? Sure, I'll go on. Uh, Carl Lewis, Jim Abbott, Peyton Manning, Michael Phelps. I was there when Ezekiel Elliott, that was my first year. And last year, how proud that the greatest collegiate volleyball player of all time, Catherine Plummer, uh, won the award. I mean, it's a really prestigious award. The presenting sponsor of that is East Bay. They also sponsor our podcast. Let's bring Adam in. Yo. Hey, Danny, how you doing? Where did, where did you go? Did you have to go discipline the children? Uh, you know, I got one right here. Well, he's for both teams. He's got his Dodgers Lakers hat on right now. This is cool. Re representing tonight. Representing tonight. Where were you when Kirk Gibson hit the home run in 1988? I was, God, I was at the University of uh, Central Florida, I think, at that time. Oh, in Orlando. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And was I, did you, did you get wind of it or did you hear it live or what happened? I mean, we were watching it live. I'm a baseball guy, so. Nice. Oh yeah, yeah, girl. You know when I was in school there in Dodger Town at that time, they were still at Dodger Town in Vero Beach. That's it right. It was great. You know we could make that ride over to Dodger Town and see those guys. So yeah, yeah, it it, it was it was the best. Um, I was actually coaching high school football at the time, and I think it was um it was post game when he hit the home run. But I was up in the scaffolding because I was helping call plays. So yeah. we saw everybody explode that was watching in car on their car, listening to the car radio, or watching handheld television units just explode all over the place from my oh. vantage point and it's just like I'm a moment sure, i'm sure i'll really interrupt interrupted at that point it was unreal it was unreal yeah. hey so um uh want to cover the sponsorship of the aau sullivan awards it's presented by east bay now i know you're out here in the west um but uh it's got to be something that that east bay takes pride in yeah i mean i think east bay and Foot Locker, you know in general you know being uh east bay being a division of Foot Locker. They definitely take pride in that, and you know, and part of it is because of the AAUs. I mean, it's part of our, it's a big part of our business and what we do on a daily basis. You know, helping those teams out, getting the product that they need. Because again, Nike, Nike, and Under Armour is not giving it away, right? They still need okay. to get that product somewhere. So, nice. you know, they have the opportunity to get it from us, and I think everybody remembers the magazine. Everybody remembers the catalog. That's right. You know, still send it out. So, you know, everybody's like. You know, especially when we're dealing with the kids nowadays, you talk to the dads. Oh God, I remember getting the catalog. And the kids catalog. Are like, oh, the catalog. That catalog's unreal. Um, yeah. And you also through uh, through our affiliation, you, you uh, sponsor with the um, the Heroes Movement. And yeah, uh, I it, yeah, I think it's a great it's a great you know opportunity to to give back. I mean, the the folks that you know are under the Heroes Movement. I mean, they've done so much for. For our country and for us in general, and I'm, you know, I'm a, uh, a child of a, you know, retired Air Force veteran, 22 years. So I've lived through, you know, you know, my old man being gone many times, going back to, you know, you know, when he enlisted in uh, Vietnam to, you know, even Desert Storm growing up as a kid uh, when he was overseas. So, uh, you know, if I have an opportunity to help out, I definitely want to be able to do that. And, and if we have the ability through East Bay to give back a little bit, then, you know, we're here to help with that. You know, uh, you, you, keep, you keep on the good foot here, and I might have my entertainment group produce a commercial like they did for Casablanca for you. You know what? I love that one. That was great. My uh, my son Cole was dancing to the music. <laughs> nice. Yeah, <laughs> it's catchy. It's catchy. Hey, uh, while while you're here, we're gonna uh, show you something 
Um, just a, a quick little promo on the on the Sullivan on the James E AAU James E Sullivan Award. And actually, if you watch carefully, every winner since 1930 is is represented in a real you know flash sequence. So um, let's do that and stick with us for a second. Yeah. Uh, You're not Adam. Sick, huh? Are you, were, did I get, were you crying? Uh, I was a little bit. It was a little teary. I seen some of those folks that have won in the past. I think I might have even caught Peyton Manning in there. Yep, you did. You did. Yeah. I know it's such a it's a, it's this crazy list. Uh, I got to give props to Marley. She put that together. She's she's giving my uh, editor, Bad Boy Bobby McCall, run for his money in the <laughs> editing department. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, did you get your margaritas and food by being a West I, I did, and I appreciate it. Uh, the fan the family is loving it, so thank you. Cheers to Carlos. Too. Thanks, Carlos. Absolutely. So, given um, you're a Dodger fan, I would imagine how many um, World Series champs you met? A couple, maybe. Have I been to? How many uh, have you met World Series champions? I, I have not met. I have not met one. So, I, I think in these in, in, in these quarantine times, this actually counts. If this does count. Yeah. Sick, Tim Leary. <laughs> hey, Tim. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good to meet you. Yeah, good to be here. Great to yeah. be here. Yeah, buddy. I like it. And Tim, oh, look and say, okay. I like what. You, see, you know, we're going to talk about the Dodgers, but you're bringing strong. Show that. Show that again. You're coming strong with UCLA and your Legion team. There's the <laughs> ring. Baby. Yeah, look at that. Oh, sick. Look. What do you got there? That's my VBC trophy. I won in the backyard championship volleyball. <laughs> I was going to show you the Sullivan Award, but I already, you know, showed that yeah, up. Be proud. You know, I showed that to Boom Boom Mancini, and I figured I'll show it to you. Good. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Adam, uh, we were talking a little bit earlier about, I, I told you, Tim, my, my show is is uh, Ring. Is that something like East Bay carries too? Do they carry like replica kind of items like that? Uh, not on the rings, um, you know, but, you know, from a gear standpoint, you know, apparel, hats, you know, we would have that. Nice. Did you yeah. want to ask Tim anything? Give me a minute because I've got a couple of questions and mm. I'll come back to well, you on that. Let me, let me tell you where I was when Kirk Gibson hit the homer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was in the, in the locker room watching on TV because I had pitched earlier in the game. Yeah. And I had, uh. I just had my mid-length underwear and shower shoes on, and boom, he hit the homer. I had to go put my pants and jersey on and hat and run out on the field. Awesome. <laughs> and then we came back in the clubhouse, and I swear nobody sat down for probably an hour and a half. It was the most incredible victory buzz ever. Oh, man. It just Tim, when it's right through the, you know, the next four games. Uh, Tim, when you were, when you were in the uh, locker room, I mean, could you just hear the noise outside? Is it pretty loud? 
you know what? We I, we weren't no because it was so loud in the locker room. That's all we could hear was each other. It was just Thank echoing. You. Yeah. So cool. uh, he, he, he was up in there where where he's taking some reps, or before he was taking a few reps off that batting tee that's below near the dugout. Apparently, he he was watching the broadcast, and you know Vince Scully had said something to the lines of like, he he won't be there tonight. Yeah, okay. I. Yeah. As it happened, so I was living at, a, at Sunset Boulevard in the PCH in the Pacific Palisades at the time. And Kirk Gibson rented a house in Santa Monica from a guy who I went to junior high school with uh, one block north of Wilshire on Berkeley. So I would pick him up every home game and take him to the games. So we became, you know, pretty close. And he is the biggest gamer of all gamers. You know, not only did he have a football mentality, but he was 6'3", 215 pounds. He ran a 4'3", 540, just a <laughs> specimen. And that's the kind of guy where if you're the manager, you don't really have to do that much when you have a guy like that. <laughs> and Lasorda was probably the greatest motivator in the history of the world. So having Lasorda and Gibson just made Socha, Hatcher, Hershiser, or Sachs, all that much more better as far as team leaders. Adam, uh, what what did you run in the forty? <laughs> Might have been a six two. <laughs> <laughs> I was. He got his joke off. I wanted Christine <laughs> to swipe him before he said it. Hey, um, you know something really um, interesting about that game wasn't only that part of it, but when you go back and you watch it, I mean, the fact of the matter is, it doesn't happen if you don't hold down those three innings. And, and so when, when they got out to that, whether it was like four to two, they got out and this is game one for those, you know, who aren't, don't know about the biggest game in the history of LA, but it was, it was four to two at that point, you know, game one of the 88 world series. And, and you had been kind of repositioned from being a starter to a reliever in the postseason, And so now you got to come in, but I think you had to warm up really quick or something, didn't you? Well, I knew I was going to be in relief and, I knew I would either come in very early, like before the fifth inning, if needed, or in extra innings, because we had other relievers that were, you know, probably going to pitch if it was the fifth inning on, up or down. So I prepared as a starter, uh, and I walked, when I was walking, there's a runway underneath the left field stands in Dodger Stadium where you can walk from the clubhouse into the bullpen. As soon as I opened the door to the bullpen, the first inning had already started and the phone was ringing. I was up. So I had, I had no time to get nervous or anything. I just started throwing as fast as I could. And then he got out of that jam and I continued to warm up. And then I sat down before the second inning started. And then when the second inning, when they came up and the A's came up in the bottom top of the second inning, uh, Tim Belcher, who was our starting pitcher, they got on base and stuff started happening again. Boom, the phone rang. I was back up. And Canseco hit that line shot grand slam off the camera and just left the center field. But they left Belcher in to finish the inning, and he got out of the inning with no more runs. And so I I, I was ready. Uh, but the I had pitched 400 innings in the previous 12 months between Mexican League, spring training, 238 innings in the 88 season. That's a lot of work. Somewhere in mid-September, I lost my mechanics a little bit, so I really didn't have command of my secondary pitches. So I pretty much threw 90% fastballs in that outing and in game three, just trying to keep the ball down or in, get ground balls, and, and it worked out. Because yeah, I mean, in the '80s, you, you, they didn't pitch like they do now, where it's strikeout, strikeout, strikeout. It was ground ball, ground ball, strikeout. Right. And you had um, Alfred, was it Alfredo Griffin? He was picking them a little bit. Yeah, we had a great defense. I mean, the team gets overlooked as as a not a very good team who happened to win the World Series. That's wrong. That was an incredible team because pitching and defense, yeah, is what wins championships. What, what was Tommy Lasorda thinking about starting a teenager? What was he, like, Belcher, like 13, 14 years old when he started that game? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> Belcher was a rookie, but he was probably 25 years old. Well, and he, I'm sure he was very nervous. <laughs> he but did. then he came back in game four and pitched into the, seventh, into the eighth inning and did very well. Or seventh or eighth inning. Yeah, we – 
We just had that was a great team. This is the best. Hey, let's uh, let's do a cheers real quick. I don't know if you got yours around you. Here you go. It's to our boy Carlos over at Casablanca. Carlos, very good. Nice. Um, we do that. That that keeps the uh, food and drink coming. Uh, that's an obligatory. Hey, yeah. uh, we I think we threw a little something together. Let, let's see what this is, and then uh, if if you'll hang out, we'll, we'll come right back and chat a little bit. I want to talk about you as a youngster too. Okay. You, you pitch for a few teams, but it's not often you get to be on a team like that 88 team. And, um, you know, I, I value what you said because pitching and defense are so important. And also I always felt because at the same time I was like coaching, I think, JV baseball or something in high school. But I was able to recognize I felt like you just out – the A's were out coached in that series. Yeah. Well, when you win everything, you, you outdo everything. but. Yeah. But the fact of the matter was they just didn't score runs. And so we didn't have to score eight or ten runs. You know, if we scored three or four and held them to two or three, boom, we win. Like that game, we won five, four. Plus, if you win game, if we win game one, we've got Hershiser for game two and game five, a guy who pitched about a hundred innings with maybe three earned runs. It was the most incredible stretch of pitching probably since 1968. Yeah, it was. I think Coral should be in the Hall of Fame. You know, that season, you had more strikeouts than he did. Yeah. Wow. Well, I had a pretty good split going that year. <laughs> is that, <laughs> that was your that was the go-to, your splitter? Because is that what you developed in the uh, Mexican leagues? Because I don't know if everybody knows this, but I think what's in between 87 and 88, you were driving from Santa Monica to Tijuana, like, to go pitch some innings, and then you'd come back or something? Well, and not only that. I was taking 16 units at UCLA in the <laughs> fall quarter. So I had four classes. So I worked a deal out with the owner of the Tijuana team that I would just pitch and then not come for the games I didn't pitch except for a couple of road trips. So I was driving 163 miles one way. I'd leave at 2 o'clock, get there at 5, uh, drink some Folgers, you know, instant coffee, pitch nine innings, put ice on my shoulder, drive home, and get up and go to school. Wow. Wow. And I, uh, yeah. I needed the innings. I needed to get my arm stronger. I needed to perfect the split better. And it all worked out. I mean, that, it's a testament to hard work. Yeah, I'll say. It sounds like our, our, our coach from uh, Ohio with the 212 philosophy. It's, it's brilliant. So when you were um, – you went to Santa Monica High School, go Vikings. That's right. You you put up a what did it say a ten and two record, a nineteen seventy six All CIF selection. Yep. Yep. I did my homework. We played. They were our American Legion team. This this yep. hat's from that. We won the national championship over oh. that summer. Oh, that was incredible. That was, was that the summer after your senior year? Yes. Where where was it hosted? I think do you start in regions and then you move to another city or something? Yeah. Well, we we won the area, so we went up to not. Yountville in Napa Valley and played the state tournament. We won that, went out to uh, Salt Lake City area, won the regionals, and then the World Series was in Manchester, New Hampshire. So good. And we uh, we beat a team from New Orleans game one, and then we I lost what would have been the winning game of the whole thing against Des Plaines, Illinois, and then our, num our other pitcher, who had pitched a no-hitter, a 10 inning no-hitter earlier in the World Series, won the final game, Richard Schroeder. That led um, – so from 
from American Legion. So you win the American Legion championship and that led you to, to being selected, I think for like the U S amateur team or the Pan Am games or something along these lines. Well, so that was, and then that fall, like that was Labor Day weekend. And um, within three weeks, school started. Then we had fall baseball at UCLA and I played at UCLA 77, 78. And the summer of 78, I was playing for uh, Fairbanks, Alaska a college summer team and I did very well and so they selected the team USA mostly from the Alaska League and then some guys from Texas A&M who went to Italy and played in the World Cup who came in second place in that and then in 79 I was on team USA again wow uh we, we in the Pan Am games and then right after that I signed pro with the Mets when you were um you know a little youngster coming up in Santa Monica in the little leagues and then going to Samo High did you um did you have this as a dream? Did it did it cross your mind that this this might happen? Th these no, are I mean I always just get to the next level. There were so many great athletes. I mean you know you were you're about my age. The athletes were everywhere. I mean there were families of four, five, eight, ten, eleven, twelve kids everywhere, and uh, so we were always playing against older kids who were great we had seven guys drafted by the pros off of that one santa monica american legion team think wow. about it wow that just didn't happen that's astounding there were no private schools other than the catholic schools so every, you know and there were only two divisions in cif large school small school so right. san ohio or st monica's no doubt uh <laughs> 1978 i was the uh backup uh choice for athlete of the year at st mark's schools tim that a boy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll be interviewing you. <laughs> yes. You know, that's what I'm working for. Um, so how did you, how'd that journey to the Dodgers, how did, how did you get there? Cause I know you were in a few franchises before then and that would, and then, and then did you come from the Reds to there? Well, no, I, uh, so I was drafted by the Mets after my junior year in college, June of 1979, signed with them. Did well in double A in 1980. Uh, 81, I had a great spring, made the majors. And my first start, I hurt my, my arm. I tore this muscle in my forearm. Anyway, a litany of issues happened over two years. And long story, not so long. After the 84 season, I got traded from the Mets to the Brewers. Oh, okay. And was with the Brewers for 1985, 86 in the American League. And then I got traded along with Tim Cruz who was in AAA with the Brewers at the time, a pitcher, to the Dodgers for Greg Brock because they, oh, wanted, they wow. wanted a left-handed hitting first baseman to replace Cecil Cooper. Right. And then in 87, I in spring training, I just wasn't throwing as hard as I had been. And I I really didn't pitch. I pitched poorly the whole year. That's why I needed to go to Mexico or I needed to go somewhere. And, and Mexico was the best option because it was close. And my wife was pregnant. With our first child, so not the first uh, guy that went to Mexico and their wife was pregnant. Well, and so I mean, at first when I got traded to the Dodgers in December of '86, I, I finished the '86 year as the number two starting pitcher with the Brewers, and thought I was all set to be with them. And then I got traded, and it was sort of like I should have been super happy, but I was a little bit conflicted at first. But then once I started going to their work winter workouts at Dodger Stadium in January and it, it sort of hit me like wow I'm with the Dodgers when you're with the uh Brewers was Bob Euchre calling the games then yeah yeah he's a hoot and then uh it, it, was a, it was a probably a, it's a fun environment every time I've been to a ball game in Milwaukee I always like that crowd oh, I loved it yeah it was, you know people are nice the fans are great I played with Robin Yao Paul Molitor Ted Simmons was there in 85. Raleigh Fingers was there in 85. Oh, wow. You know, Cecil Cooper. It's a lot of veterans. You um, you won the Silver Slugger Award one year, which, for those who don't know, that's the top uh, that's the top performing pitcher as a hitter. Yeah, 1988. 1988. Do you, do you have that sitting around anywhere? That bat? Yeah, I do. When you take a break, I'll uh, get it. Sick. <laughs> I, I, I like it. I like it. Although I do have this. I got comeback player of the year also. Oh, that's right. Because my 87 was so poor. So I'm pretty proud of this. Heck yeah. Especially on that, <laughs> on that great team. 
Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you grab that and um, and then we'll, uh, we'll we're going to bring somebody in that you might know as you go grab that. Oh, it's arriving as we speak. Oh, there it is. Look at that. That's intense. That's a hard award to win because you got to be the top hitting at your position to get a Silver Slugger award. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of that because I, I mean, everyone I know grew up to play baseball to hit. Yeah. Right. There were only two of us that pitched on our teams out of 12. It's not like now we're 10 kids out of 12 pitch. So uh, before the league finds out you're a good hitter, you get more fastballs early in the count. So that was my strategy. Hit the first fastball, that was a strike. Nice. nice. After that, I didn't hit so well after 1988. I got a lot of breaking balls. and yeah. Back then, it was before they had the strike zone square that they have now. So if a pitcher was batting and got two strikes, if it were six inches outside, they would just ring you up. So yeah. you had to swing early in the count. They're getting you out of there. Tim, one of the things I know about you um, in doing the research is you're very, very generous. You're not only generous with your time and helping youngsters, but when you're a player, you would leave tickets for friends and family. And... Um, so my, uh, I got somebody who you left a game one of the 88 World Series ticket from. And uh, that's the ticket we've been showing on those graphics. And we want to bring them in right now. Let's see if we got them. We're going to shoot down to Carlsbad. And that's my oldest hey. brother, Bobby. Hey, Tim. how, how are you doing? doing? Where? Let me see where that is. There it is. There it is. Nice. Thank you, Tim. That was a, a great, good. great game to be um, at. It yeah, was it was. Yeah. yeah. Eileen was there, Colleen, uh, Dennis, all of all, everybody. You know, it was just a, it was a wonderful memory, and I thank you for that. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, you're welcome. I was, I was happy to do it. I, I must. I think I, I uh, had 50 people with tickets that game. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bobby, you were you were on the left field. You're in the left field side of the, of the I was. stadium. I was. Were you all? Go ahead. You all? What, were you also in your underwear? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, you I wasn't, had... Denny, but thanks for asking. I, I know you're interested in that, but uh, we'll, let's go right by that. Was, uh, you, you were, your you seats mean, were near the foul pole, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, we were in the left field, Loge left field. Yeah, oh. it, was, it, was, it was just so so much fun to watch that game. I, we really had a blast. I think um, about it, 32 years later, they're still waiting for that kind of excitement. I, no yeah. kidding. I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. I went to the Nationals Dodgers game last year, the first game they played in the, and the Dodgers won. And then, boom, the Nationals ended up winning the whole thing based on their pitching and defense. Yeah. Timely hitting, same formula. Yeah. I say, Tim, do you remember this? This is uh, actually, it's 30 years ago this month, it was in April. And I, I found this in my box of memorabilia. Let's see, do you remember this one? Let me see if you can get it up there. Is that a Yankees? Yeah, Yankees. It was in the snow. You were pitching in oh, the yeah. snow. Do you remember that? I, yeah. I was the opening day starter for the Yankees in, in 1990 in Cleveland, and it got snowed out in the third inning. And then five days later, I pitched a night game in Detroit, 14 degrees. I went nine innings. I just jammed everybody. They were screaming at me. They hated me. <laughs> How do you grip the ball when it's that cold? Well, you, you know, the biggest thing is you, you A, you got to be, you got to wear all the right stuff. At least I did long sleeves and long underwear and all that, and then warm up properly. I liked pitching in the cold once I learned how, because the hitters hate it. And in between innings, you can go in and warm up. And I never had problems gripping the ball. Yeah. So for me, it wasn't an issue. Uh, okay. I, I have dry. I don't sweat a lot anyway, so if I, if I needed anything, I would use the rosin. Got it. Uh, can so, you put that picture back up? So, Denny, Denny, you were talking about trophies. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> what do you got? Is that a best defense? Best defense. Thank you. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, it's not easy to pull a trophy out of the backyard like that. you got to give them props there, Tim. <laughs> Had it for years. It's the only trophy I ever got. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm, I'm happy yeah. about that. That's good, you know. That's why we're bringing it back around. Um, so that's Bobby's ticket right there. Uh, the one of the two pitchers, 54. Hey, um, so that 
my Bobby, do you recognize who the kid is? Uh, the, the kid guy? is my grandson, Gavin. Gavin Thompson. Yeah, that um, I need to see him pitch when we no, all get he, through with all the. He's he's actually in American Legion now, Tim. And what he's, uh, he's a, what what grade is he in? Oh, ninth, I think. I, I, High ninth. school. Yes. <laughs> Let's break it down, Tim. Uh, let's break it down on the release right here. Did you like the high kick? Yeah, that. looks great. The toe down, good balance, great number. <laughs> yeah. Number fifty-four. How did you come across that number? <laughs> well, that's that's a good question. So in 88, 87, the Dodgers gave me number twenty-three, and I didn't have a good year, terrible year. And then when Gibson signed, they he asked the publicity people or whoever to ask me if he could have the number because that had been his number in the majors, in college, everything. I said, yeah, no problem. So then they just assigned me number 54, and I had a great year, so I kept that number the rest of my career. Wow. And in fact, when I was on the Yankees, Goose Gossage wore 54 before I did on the Yankees, and – Somehow he had left one of his jock straps. It kept showing up in my locker, and I'd throw it in the laundry, and it would show up in my locker. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tim, uh, did you know my brother served in uh, Vietnam in the Navy? No. Um, I'll, I'll ask you another question. Do you know what, what they say to a ship when it when it leaves? Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Anchors away, baby. I had to do that. Uh, that's how I got that. He, he, he <laughs> there. We keep we keep our star around. Don't you worry, Tim. I would never throw out a Dodger World Series champion. Because uh, I want you, I want to introduce you to our, our next guest. Um, and and you guys have a little chat. I don't know if you saw the open, but the creator of this book series um, was Kobe Bryant, and this is a New York Times best-selling author, uh, Wesley King, who is the author of these books. So he he got a chance to work with an NBA champion. What's happening, Wesley? How you doing, guys? Hey, how you doing? Doing good. Uh, doing? We're coming to you. Uh, you're in Nova Scotia, is that right? Yeah, it's a little colder up here than what you guys are experiencing, I, I suspect. W what's the name of your town? Uh, it's Lake Echo. Lake Echo. Okay. Um, you, know, you ever had to pitch in uh, Nova Scotia in the cold up there, Tim? I pitched in Ottawa. What? <laughs> Ottawa's much colder. I lived in Ottawa for four years. It's much colder. Yeah. Ottawa, <laughs> Montreal, Toronto, Calgary, Vancouver, Edmonton. Oh, you got around, yeah. That's... Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Was Baseball that a minor league team? All over. <laughs> Pardon me. Was that a minor league team you're on? Yeah, I was on a couple different minor league teams that played in uh, in the Pacific Coast League, and then it, when I was in Ottawa, that was the International League. And then uh, in the National League, we played in Montreal. and the American League, we played in Toronto. I played in the old stadium in Toronto and the Sky Dome. Wesley, you, um, you, you have a sports team that runs through some of your books because I know you, you played a fair amount of sports while you were um, growing up. And um, have you, have you, do you have much familiarity with that, uh, that Dodgers historic game one in 88? I do, yeah. And uh, I had, since we were showing our, uh, our – our ridiculous uh, own trophies. I had to show you guys. I, this is uh, three out of four athletes of the year when I was in high school. Oh, right? so, yeah. snap. Nice. <laughs> I used to run that in Kobe's <laughs> face, and I played more sports than him. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He up. yeah, let's go, Tim. Okay, here. <laughs> <laughs> What's that say? Uh... I can't read it. Read it. Tell us, Tim. Uh, first team academic All American. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. All right. What do you got then, King? What are we doing? Super proud of that one. <laughs> I think I got some. I got some book related awards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, um, I think I think if we had Kobe, you know, if Kobe, you know, sadly was still around, I think he might be able to trump all three of us combined. I've got a I little trophy so. I want to show you. All right. It is from 1969, baby. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> little, boys club, little conference football. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah. I put mine in storage. That was actually my dad's trophy. He was our coach. Oh, that's nice. Um, All right. Well, who's got a basketball shoe, though? Oh, oh nice. Oh, okay. It's our basketball shoe. <laughs> that's sick. Right? There. Adam oh wow! Yeah, Adam's got to carry those in, in, in East Bay. We can we can work on that. Hey, uh, uh, Tim, um, thanks for for coming on. This was awesome. Never uh, got a chance to talk to a World Series champion like that. Mm -hmm. Can you see this? Uh oh, that's the food. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Casablanca food right there. That, that's a trophy in and of itself. Yeah. Um. Little promo, Tim. I, I throw. I told you I, I wouldn't throw you off, but my wife might. Just heads up. <laughs> she loves doing that. She likes it. Look, I'm the one that takes all the heat on this stuff, Wesley, and she's just behind the scenes, just dealing. I hear you. Um, you got this. Um, you, 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 I, I only came a, a, across you because you know my kids are are grown, and so so your book series wouldn't have come across my my purview, but. You know, my wife is a teacher, and so she was familiar once I brought you up. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I, I saw it in the L.A. Times, something about you collaborating with Kobe, and it was maybe a month after he died. And um, and that caught my eye because I was at his memorial, and, um, you know, we had done a, uh, a podcast that was themed kind of hashtag girl dad. And I'd really been impressed with the end of his life, how much he dedicated himself to his children, and then just how he took that same crazy competitive zeal into whatever else he was doing. And, and that's when you, you, you came into contact with him, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was, he was a nut through and through, as I told him all the time that that went, went for basketball to everything he did. That guy was all in on everything. Um, how, how did this, how did this come up? How, how did this come apart? I mean, come, uh, come to be that you two uh, collaborated on this. Yeah. I mean, four years ago I was, um, doing the typical Nova Scotia thing. It was sitting on a tin fishing boat, you know, fishing out of the back in the ocean in the backyard there. And I got an email uh, that from my agent saying, you know, it was really random. It was like exclamation marks. It was like, Kobe wants to talk to you about writing a book. And four years ago, you know, that made no sense whatsoever. I mean, we knew nothing that Kobe wanted to be storytelling. Uh, I hopped on the phone with him that night. And he told me he was a fan of my books, had been reading my books, was a, wow. was a big fan. Uh, I, I straight up told him I was not a fan of him um, because he beat up my Toronto Raptors. Okay, routinely. for 81 points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he told me once that he was uh, he mu he was always pissed off having to fly so far and go through customs, so he took it out on the Toronto Raptors. He did that. Oh, wow. Oh, but, that's cool. Michael Jordan Because he always always decimated the Raptors. The 81, the most famous example, but it was just constantly. He was just beating up on them constantly. Um, and I, he laughed so much when I told him I wasn't a fan the first time I talked to him, and he just kind of invited me down to L.A. Maybe that was that bit of that Canadian honesty that he was looking for. I don't know. <laughs> wow. So, so you go down to L.A., and he just wants to meet in person kind of thing? Yeah. So we, uh, I walk into his office, and this is in Newport Beach. Yeah. And... Uh, I walk in and he's got this like 20 by 20 picture of a black mamba snake on the wall, <laughs> this giant black desk. He looks like this archetypical, like super villain. You know, he's got the true Kobe personality. And I'm thinking like, oh shit, like, you know, this is a little more serious than I thought. I was wearing like a baseball get. I was wearing shorts, flip flops, <laughs> like a t-shirt, like, you know, but he gets up, gives me a hug. And, and his only words are, are you ready? And I'm just kind of like, yeah it, and he wow. had such enthusiasm and we were just we started he just knew before i even got there that he wanted to get going wow and, and yes. so so that's wild so he um he was already in that post for now you're what cheers by the way sorry that carlos couldn't yeah. get that food up to nova scotia sometimes he slacks yeah. we, we tried if 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 if, if carlos, yeah I know. yeah carlos would have jumped on a uh, on a on a what kind of ship do you have i mean what kind of uh, boat do you have I got a 1967 original uh, Camber Nicholson sailboat. Yeah, so if if Carlos would have been thinking, he would have commandeered a sailboat, got up to Nova Scotia, and dropped you off some food. But cheers anyway. So when Kobe, um, when you meet Kobe, so you're you're only 33 right now, right? 
Yep, just turned 33 in January. What the? Heck? You you got to get going on your life, my friend. New York Times best. <laughs> um, what was uh? So 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 Kobe, that must have been something for you because you saw him in your in his in his prime, just going at it, and yeah. then and then here you are in L.A. and you're meeting him. Yeah, I mean it was surreal, and uh, you know again I was I was being totally honest. I you not only I mean I had this totally mis you know this misrepresentation of him where I thought he was the bad guy that he was playing in the NBA. And that was so far from the truth. And I knew that within five minutes of meeting this guy, you know, he's got these, he's got a Harry Potter in a glass case in his office, Game of Thrones. These are like his prized possessions. Wow. He's like wow. talking to me crazy. You know, we're, we're diving into Game of Thrones. Like he was a nerd like that. He had nothing. The Black Mamba was definitely just a uh, character he was playing. Um, and, and he was just, he was like the, the, the world's greatest dad by far and he was just you know a nerd he you know we spent we once spent i think like an hour and a half just fuming over the last season of game of thrones like this is what we talked about oh cool that is so <laughs> cool. dive into almost anything what um okay so i'm listening um on on kindle because that was the most efficient way to, to, to start like crash coursing on mm. the wizardry series and um, one, it's 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 like I really enjoy it. But the actual, um, the way you wrote it, it's got really legit basketball terms that aren't on any level cheesy that you might see, you know, in a kid's book that is intended. Right? It's like it's 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 really legit kind of language. That did you collaborate with him on that? I mean, I know you have an athletic background, but it's it oh yeah yeah a little bit. I mean, I think there's. You know, you might think, and, and I've heard this before, you know, it says on the covers, and this is part speaks to Kobe's humility, created by Kobe, written by Wesley King. But, like, Kobe was in on this. We were talking every single day while we were working on this. He was reading everything. We were texting constantly. Everything in there is very authentically Kobe, and, and the basketball is all straight out of his head. It's his coaching. It's his mentality. Um, that is extremely authentic. Uh you know, I played I played ball, but, you know, not at his level. We were, you know, again, one of the a thousand tragedies related to his passing, but we were supposed to have a one-on-one -on -one game and uh, and see what we could do. Because I'm bigger than Kobe, so I thought I could post him up a little, but, you know. <laughs> you got your six files to give to. That's what I figured. I thought, you know, I'd get a couple points on him or something. But, uh, <laughs> you know, when it came no, I don't think he would have let you. To basketball, I ceded to his system. <laughs> um. You, no, you're right. Stop. I would have scored it points. Yeah, you would. <laughs> it would. It would have been like exactly. what was LeBron with um with what in that one movie uh he finally scored. I forget. Um, who. Yeah, Bill the Bill Hader in Trainwreck. Yeah, yeah. He finally got that one bucket. <laughs> um, hey, uh, Reggie, who, who's the uh, Reggie is the uh, protagonist in 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 he you know works really hard to to move from being a bench player on that team right to get into lineup, but. One of the specific things that just sounded so much like Kobe was he kept w having to work on that baseline three point jumper. Like that was yeah. the thing. And so it's so cool how you bring in all of this, I guess, magic or whatever the premise was to keep forcing him to have to work on that jumper because that was the best thing for the team. Yeah. Kobe would come at me with some, some, you know, real world stuff. You know, he'd, you know, we had sort of a, a, an experience in the first book where he wanted me to implement the triangle. And uh, and I put the triangle in, and then we thought about it. He's like, I don't even think people are playing the triangle anymore. I was like, no, they're not. Like, this you know, this is over, Kobe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and we, that's only because they don't know how to play the triangle. You know, that was, <laughs> that was the problem, right? So we then moved to this spotlight offense and we came up with this more, you know, the golden state style sort of uh, free flowing offense. And so with, with season one, two, he would give me, you know, how do we make the kids have to work on their, their weak spots? And so he would give me a basketball theme and I would, I would, you know, put magic into it in a sense. Uh, Cause that was my background. So we just kind of met there and I'm a big basketball guy too. And he's a big magic guy. So we just sort of converged there and, and sort of found our sweet spot. You know, that, that that's so brilliant. So, Hey, uh, um, I, you're coming back on Monday, and and so we get to dive in, and I'm and I'm particularly interested in your early work, and and also your um you're very forthright about the issues that you deal with, and in order to help not only young people but but people of, of all ages, and so I'm gonna encourage everybody that's watching, I'll watch as as this archives to uh, to join us on Monday, 
uh, to further extend this. I understand um, your, um, your, your boat's down in uh, Africa and you can't get it out of there? That's right. Stuck in Port El Kentawi, Tunisia. Mm. <laughs> now, who's the captain now, Wesley? <laughs> Some Tunisian guy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, so that, be, that means we're lucky enough that we, we know where to find you on Monday. And we're looking forward to that interview. It should be, it should be uh, uh, fun to dive in. Uh, I'm excited about it. Hope, hopefully, uh, you'll yes. bring your, hopefully you'll bring your A game because Kobe would expect nothing less. Always. <laughs> right on, buddy. Hey, well, well, thank you for coming on. We look forward to it on Monday. Thanks, and, uh, and we'll see you then. Oh, I didn't throw him off. He's too nice. He... <laughs> My wife penalized me for not throwing him off. Solid. Keep keep <laughs> keep it strict around here. All right. That is a Sullivan Award. Wednesday next week. It's gonna be crazy. I think 60, 70,000 people across the country voted to see who the top uh nation's top amateur athlete is. And so that'll be um that'll be spoken on this show uh Wednesday, on this channel rather, next Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, wait, this is the podium I'll be at. There it is. And we'll dress the place up. So that'll be great. But prior to that, Monday with Wesley King. And hopefully you saw what a, what a great guy he is. And um, in some of his early work is great. I really suggest everybody go. Kind of just look him up. Look at his background. It, it should be a really good conversation on Monday. Okay. I think we got most things done. Right. Stayed inside of an hour. Still time for Box Cobbler Entertainment. And kicking it out book. <laughs> See you, peoples. Ground control to Major Tom. <laughs> that gets me. Sports Stories with Denny Lennon. His podcast is on Thursdays. On Facebook, you can catch him on Wednesdays and Fridays. And he's also got a blog. This guy is out of this world. Ground control to Major Tom. Oh, boy. Sports Stories with Denny Lennon is supported by the AAU. Find a local event and join at aausports.org. And remember, you can catch your favorite amateur sports live stream, replays, and highlights at ballertv.com. Sports Stories, along with East Bay, supports the Heroes Movement, a nonprofit that bridges the gap from mental or physical therapy to getting strong again through strength and conditioning workouts. This free service is available for any veteran of the United States Armed Forces. Visit HeroesMovementUSA.org for more information. Sports Stories, along with thousands of people across the country, also supports the My Stuff Bags Foundation a nonprofit that provides traumatized children with new belongings and new hope. Learn more at mystuffbags.org. Sports Stories with Denny Lennon is a production of Sports Stories, Inc. and is available on Apple Podcasts and YouTube or wherever you listen and watch. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and give us a review. It really helps spread the word. You can find all our social media links, archives, and other info on our website at sportsstoriespodcast.com. Special thanks to the John R. Wooden Course and Wooden's Wisdom. Original music for Sports Stories is courtesy of Lennon Music Productions. Original images by Sienna Lennon Photography. Sports Stories is produced by Christine Jimbo and Marley Rice. Sports Stories is edited by Bob McCall. Additional staff include Ray Castro, Teresa Dolan, Jake Downey, Carlos Haro, and Buck Magic Lennon. Kick it out, Buck! Yeah, kick it out! Kick it out! Yeah, buddy! Way to kick it out! Good job!